Hey everyone, Jem Schofield here off the bench. Obviously not anywhere near New York City. This is, uh, this is Scotland in the background and you may be hearing it. This is about five minutes away from where I grew up as a little kid and I'm here on vacation with my family. And actually what we're talking about today is double system sound. I needed a small kit on this trip. I didn't want to travel with my EX-1 with a 35 millimeter lens adapter and everything else. And so what I did do is I brought a DSLR. I have the Canon 5D Mark II with the new 1.1 firmware update. So I have full manual control over video, but the one thing that you really have a problem with here is is audio because you've got automatic gain control being applied to it there are some hacks and workarounds and things like that but they don't work very well at the moment so what most people are doing um, there they are they're busy over there um, is they're going old school and they are recording audio to a separate device and actually now with a uh, new piece of software called pluralize from singular software you can go into final cut pro and match these things up it's really easy i'm going to show you guys that in a couple of minutes um, but let me show you guys this little setup here so you can kind of get a feel for what i have so basically i have a shotgun mic here um, i found something to hold it for me so uh, there you go it's sort of some sort of old cable thing and i've got a wireless log and those are actually running to, well, let me take you over here and show you. We've got the Samsung H4n. Uh, it's a, uh, the Zoom H4n. It's a flash based recorder here. And you're just picking me up right now, right off the lav, because obviously I'm not near that shotgun. I've got the 5D Mark II here. I've got a, uh, a Miller uh, head here, the DS20. I'm using the uh, Sennheiser uh, wireless lav, and I've got an ME66 over there. And I've got this new uh, Marshall here. And so that's helping me tremendously, especially for, uh, you know, when I want to pull focus and things like that. So, um, so you'll see, well, yeah, there you go. So that's the whole setup there. And basically if I go back here, so you can see me again, I'm going to go um, back to the studio and I'm actually going to take you into Pluralize and Final Cut Pro and show you how to put these things together. Okay, we're back at the studio and we're going to now take a look at how to sync up all of this stuff from the 5D Mark II and the iPhone with the audio that was recorded from the Zoom H4n. So down here I have a sequence in Final Cut Pro. I'm going to go over here, Command-0, and take a look at my sequence settings. And I can immediately see that my sequence does not match the camera. This is a 1280x720 preset, 2398. Uh, Apple ProRes. So I'm going to go over here to load sequence preset and I actually have a preset that I've created and it's very important for this particular camera to create a preset. So I'm just going to click OK and take a look at those. You'll see it's 1920 by 1080 square pixels, no field dominance and the most important thing here, editing time base set to 30. Even if you use some of the presets that are inside of Final Cut Pro, you're still going to encounter sync issues with this particular camera when you are trying to sync things up unless you create a preset. Uh, in terms of the audio settings, I'm making sure that my preset matches the way I recorded my audio to the device, to the H4n. That's 48 kilohertz, 16 bit in my situation. So I'm just going to click OK. My sequence is going to change over. Let me just do a command zero to make sure that it did. Yep, that's fine. And then down here, I have my 5D Mark II clip. I have my iPhone clip here. This is the stuff that was shot on the iPhone that you saw earlier on. And I also have the audio clip that was recorded um, two channels to the H4n. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take the 5D Mark II footage. I'm going to dump that into the sequence. It's fine. I'm just going to put it anywhere. I'm going to take the iPhone footage and I'm going to put that in above it. And I'm going to take the audio from the H4n. I'm just going to put that into the sequence. Now the one thing that I want to show you before I go into the next step is that I've actually converted all of the video from the 5D Mark II and also from the iPhone to ProRes in compressor. The footage that's coming off the 5D Mark II is H.264. That's not an easy codec to work with um, in, in an editing application. It's a lot of work for your processor to do that. So. Um, stuff is inside of the sequence. What I want to do now, very, very important, is in order to use Pluralize, I need to rename my sequence, Pluralize. And once I've done that, I can go down to the application. Here it is, Pluralize. And it's going to load up this little dialog. And I'm going to click on the Sync button. And it's going to go ahead and analyze 
the sequence here. And there it is. Now as soon as it's done analyzing it and it's gone through everything, it's going to say that it's finished. It says unable to create multi-clip. Well, that's totally fine. We're not actually using this software to work with multi-clip right now in terms of creating a, um, a multi-clip file. And I'm going to close that out, go down to my sequence, and we'll take a look at this. And what I'm going to do is turn off the audio from the 5D Mark II and from the iPhone, and we'll just go ahead and play this back and see what we have. Four minutes. Um, but let me show you guys this little setup here so you can kind of get a feel for what I have. So basically, so I haven't done the picture in picture there. This is the raw footage here, but you can see that there is sync there. We don't have any issues with that. A separate device. And actually now with as simple as that to work with this, you've got uh, software that's $150 that's pluralized from singular software. You've got the H4N. It's about a $350 device. Put them together, $500, double system sound to use with Final Cut Pro, and it's fantastic. You not only use it for DSLR cameras, but any kind of camera at all. You can see I used it for that iPhone, so that was pretty cool. And that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time.